Bactria, or Bactriana was a historical region in Central Asia. Bactria proper was north of the Hindu Kush mountain range and south of the Amu Darya River, covering the flat region that straddles modern-day Afghanistan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, and parts of northern Pakistan. More broadly Bactria was the area north of the Hindu Kush, west of the Pamirs and south of the Tian Shan with the Amu Darya flowing west through the center. Topic. Name The English name Bactria is derived from the ancient Greek, Bactrian Bactriani, a Hellenized version of the Bactrian endonym Baklo. Analogous names include Avestan, Bakdi, Old Persian, Bactrish, New Persian, Bakta Romanized, Bakta, Tajik, Botar Pashtu, Block Romanized, Balk, Uzbek, Bal Chinese, Dacia Pinyin, Daxia, and Sanskrit, Balika Romanized, Balika. Topic. Geography According to Pierre Lerich, Bactria, the territory of which Bactra Balk was the capital, originally consisted of the area south of the Amu Darya with its string of agricultural oases dependent on water taken from the rivers of Balk Bactra Balk, Tashkurgan, Kondas, Kondas Sar -e -pol, and Siran Tagaw This region played a major role in Central Asian history. At certain times the political limits of Bactria stretched far beyond the geographic frame of the Bactrian plain. Topic: History. Topic: Bronze Age. The Bactria Margiana Archaeological Complex (BMAC), also known as the Oxus civilization", is the modern archaeological designation for a Bronze Age culture of Central Asia, dated to c. 2200-1700 BC, located in present-day eastern Turkmenistan, northern Afghanistan, southern Uzbekistan and western Tajikistan, centered on the upper Amu Darya Oxus River, an area covering ancient Bactria. Its sites were discovered and named by the Soviet archaeologist Viktor Serionidi Bactria was the Greek name for Old Persian Baxtras from native asterisk Baxis named for its capital Bactra, modern Balkh, in what is now northern Afghanistan, and Margiana was the Greek name for the Persian satrapy of Margu, the capital of which was Merv, in today's Turkmenistan. The early Greek historian Ctecs, c. 400 BC followed by Diodorus Siculus, alleged that the legendary Assyrian king Ninus had defeated a Bactrian king named Oxyades in c. 2140 BC, or some 1,000 years before the Trojan War. Since the decipherment of cuneiform script in the 19th century, however, which enabled actual Assyrian records to be read, historians have ascribed little value to the Greek account. According to some writers, Bactria was the homeland of Indo-Iranians who moved southwest into Iran and the northwest of the Indian subcontinent around 2500-2000 BC. Later, it became the northern province of the Achaemenid Empire in Central Asia. It was in these regions, where the fertile soil of the mountainous country is surrounded by the Turun Depression, that the prophet Zoroaster was said to have been born and gained his first adherence. Avestan, the language of the oldest portions of the Zoroastrian Avesta, was one of the old Iranian languages, and is the oldest attested member of the Eastern Iranian languages. Achaemenid Empire Ernst Hertzfeld suggested that before its annexation to the Achaemenid Empire by Cyrus the Great in 6th century BC, Bactria belonged to the Medes and together with Margiana, formed the 12th satrapy of Persia. After Darius III had been defeated by Alexander the Great, the satrap of Bactria, Bessus, attempted to organize a national resistance but was captured by other warlords and delivered to Alexander. He was then tortured and killed. Topic: <inaudible> Alexander. Alexander conquered Sogdiana. In the south, beyond the Oxus, he met strong resistance. After two years of war and a strong insurgency campaign, Alexander managed to establish little control over Bactria. After Alexander's death, Diodorus Siculus tells us that Philip received dominion over Bactria, but Justin names Amentas to that role. 
At the Treaty of Triparadisus, both Diodorus Siculus and Arian agree that the satrap Stasinor gained control over Bactria. Eventually, Alexander's empire was divided up among the generals in Alexander's army. Bactria became a part of the Seleucid Empire, named after its founder, Seleucus I. Seleucid Empire The Macedonians, especially Seleucus I and his son Antiochus I, established the Seleucid Empire and founded a great many Greek towns. The Greek language became dominant for some time there. The paradox that Greek presence was more prominent in Bactria than in areas far closer to Greece can possibly be explained by past deportations of Greeks to Bactria. For instance, during the reign of Darius I, the inhabitants of the Greek city of Barca, in Cyrenaica, were deported to Bactria for refusing to surrender assassins. In addition, Xerxes also settled the Brancidae in Bactria. They were the descendants of Greek priests who had once lived near Didyma Western Asia Minor and betrayed the temple to him. Herodotus also records a Persian commander threatening to enslave daughters of the revolting Ionians and send them to Bactria. However, these few examples are not indicative of massive deportations of Greeks to Central Asia. <laughs> Greco-Bactrian Kingdom Considerable difficulties faced by the Seleucid kings and the attacks of Pharaoh Ptolemy II Philadelphus gave the satrap of Bactria, Diodotus I, the opportunity to declare independence about 245 BC and conquer Sogdia. He was the founder of the Greco-Bactrian kingdom. Diodotus and his successors were able to maintain themselves against the attacks of the Seleucids—particularly from Antiochus III the Great, who was ultimately defeated by the Romans 190 BC. The Greco-Bactrians were so powerful that they were able to expand their territory as far as India. As for Bactria, a part of it lies alongside Arya towards the north, though most of it lies above Arya and to the east of it. And much of it produces everything except oil. The Greeks who caused Bactria to revolt grew so powerful on account of the fertility of the country that they became masters, not only of Bactria and beyond, but also of India, as Apollodorus of Artemida says, and more tribes were subdued by them than by Alexander. The Greco-Bactrians used the Greek language for administrative purposes, and the local Bactrian language was also Hellenized, as suggested by its adoption of the Greek alphabet and Greek loanwords. In turn, some of these words were also borrowed by modern Pashto. <inaudible> Indo-Greek kingdom The Bactrian king Euthydemus I and his son Demetrius I crossed the Hindu Kush mountains and began the conquest of the Indus Valley. For a short time, they wielded great power, a great Greek empire seemed to have arisen far in the east. But this empire was torn by internal dissension and continual usurpations. When Demetrius advanced far east of the Indus River, one of his generals, Eucratides, made himself king of Bactria, and soon in every province there arose new usurpers, who proclaimed themselves kings and fought against each other. Most of them we know only by their coins, a great many of which are found in Afghanistan. By these wars, the dominant position of the Greeks was undermined even more quickly than would otherwise have been the case. After Demetrius and Eucratides, the kings abandoned the Attic standard of coinage and introduced a native standard, no doubt to gain support from outside the Greek minority. In the Indus Valley, this went even further. The Indo-Greek king Menander I, known as Milinda in India, recognized as a great conqueror, converted to Buddhism. His successors managed to cling to power until the last known Indo-Greek ruler, a king named Strato II, who ruled in the Punjab region until around 55 BC. Other sources, however, place the end of Strato II's reign as late as 10 AD. <laughs> Daxia, Tukhara and Tokharistan Daxia, Ta Hsia, or Ta Hia Chinese, da Chia Pinyin, Daxia was the name given in antiquity by the Han Chinese to Tukhara or Tokhara, the central part of Bactria. The name, Daxia, appears in Chinese from the 3rd century BC to designate a little-known kingdom located somewhere west of China. This was possibly a consequence of the first contacts between China and the Greco-Bactrian kingdom. 
During the 2nd century BC, the Greco-Bactrians were conquered by nomadic Indo-European tribes from the north, beginning with the Sakas 160 BC. The Sakas were overthrown in turn by the Dayuji, Greater Yuji, during subsequent decades. The Yuji had conquered Bactria by the time of the visit of the Chinese envoy Zhang Qian circa 127 BC, who had been sent by the Han Emperor to investigate lands to the west of China. The first mention of these events in European literature appeared in the 1st century BC, when Strabo described how the Asii, Passiani, Tokari, and Sakaroli had taken part in the destruction of the Greco-Bactrian kingdom. Ptolemy subsequently mentioned the central role of the Tokari among other tribes in Bactria. As Tukara or Tokara it included areas that were later part of Sursondario province in Uzbekistan, southern Tajikistan and northern Afghanistan. The Tokari spoke a language known later as Bactrian, an Iranian language. The Tokari and their language should not be confused with the Tokarian people who lived in the Tarim Basin between the 3rd and 9th centuries AD, or the Tokarian languages that form another branch of Indo-European languages. The name Daxia was used in the Shiji records of the Grand Historian by Sima Qian. Based on the reports of Zhang Qian, the Shiji described Daxia as an important urban civilization of about one million people, living in walled cities under small city kings or magistrates. Daxia was an affluent country with rich markets, trading in an incredible variety of objects, coming from as far as southern China. By the time Zhang Qian visited, there was no longer a major king, and the Bactrians were under the suzerainty of the Yuji. Zhang Qian depicted a rather sophisticated but demoralized people who were afraid of war. Following these reports, the Chinese Emperor Wu Dai was informed of the level of sophistication of the urban civilizations of Fergana, Bactria, and Parthia, and became interested in developing commercial relationship with them. The Son of Heaven, on hearing all this, reasoned thus: Dayan and the possessions of Daxia and Anxi Parthia are large countries, full of rare things, with a population living in fixed abodes and given to occupations somewhat identical with those of the people of Han, but with weak armies, and placing great value on the rich produce of China. These contacts immediately led to the dispatch of multiple embassies from the Chinese, which helped to develop trade along the Silk Roads. Kujula Kadphises, the Exaho prince of the Yuji, united the region in the early 1st century and laid the foundations for the powerful, but short-lived, Kushan Empire. In the 3rd century AD, Tukara was under the rule of the Kushanches Indo The form Tokharistan, the suffix stan means, place of in Sanskrit, appeared for the first time in the 4th century, in Buddhist texts, such as the Vibhasa Sastra. Tokara was known in Chinese sources as Tuhuluo, Tuhuluo which is first mentioned during the Northern Wei era. In the Tang dynasty, the name is transcribed as Tuhuluo, Tuhuluo. Other Chinese names are Daoshuluo Daoshaluo, Dukluo Daokuluo or Dehuluo Duhuoluo. During the 5th century, Bactria was controlled by the Ekshanites and the Hephthalites, but was subsequently reconquered by the Sassanid Empire. <inaudible> <inaudible> Introduction of Islam By the mid-7th century, Islam under the Rashidun Caliphate, had come to rule much of the Middle East and western areas of Central Asia. In 663, the Umayyad Caliphate attacked the Buddhist Shahi dynasty ruling in Tokharistan. The Umayyad forces captured the area around Balkh, including the Buddhist monastery at Nava Vihara, causing the Shahis to retreat to the Kabul Valley. In the 8th century, a Persian from Balkh known as Sayman Qudar left Zoroastrianism for Islam while living under the Umayyads. His children founded the Samanid Empire 875 to 999. Persian became the official language and had a higher status than Bactrian, because it was the language of Muslim rulers. It eventually replaced the latter as the common language due to the preferential treatment as well as colonization. <laughs> Bactrian people Bactrians were the inhabitants of Bactria. Several important trade routes from India and China including the Silk Road passed through Bactria and, as early as the Bronze Age, this had allowed the accumulation of vast amounts of wealth by the mostly nomadic population. The first proto-urban civilization in the area arose during the 2nd millennium BC. 
Control of these lucrative trade routes, however, attracted foreign interest, and in the 6th century BC the Bactrians were conquered by the Persians, and in the 4th century BC by Alexander the Great. These conquests marked the end of Bactrian independence. From around 304 BC the area formed part of the Seleucid Empire, and from around 250 BC it was the center of a Greco-Bactrian kingdom, ruled by the descendants of Greeks who had settled there following the conquest of Alexander the Great. The Greco-Bactrians, also known in Sanskrit as Yavanas, worked in cooperation with the native Bactrian aristocracy. By the early 2nd century BC the Greco-Bactrians had created an impressive empire that stretched southwards to include northwest India. By about 135 BC, however, this kingdom had been overrun by invading Yuji tribes, an invasion that later brought about the rise of the powerful Kushan Empire. Bactrians were recorded in Strabo's geography. Now in early times the Sogdians and Bactrians did not differ much from the nomads in their modes of life and customs, although the Bactrians were a little more civilized, however, of these, as of the others, Onesocritus does not report their best traits, saying, for instance, that those who have become helpless because of old age or sickness are thrown out alive as prey to dogs kept expressly for this purpose, which in their native tongue are called undertakers and that while the land outside the walls of the metropolis of the Bactrians looks clean, yet most of the land inside the walls is full of human bones, but that Alexander broke up the custom." The Bactrians spoke Bactrian, a northeastern Iranian language. Bactrian became extinct, replaced by northeastern Iranian languages such as Pashtu, Yija, Munji, and Ishkashmi. The Encyclopedia Iranica states, Bactrian thus occupies an intermediary position between Pashtu and Yijamunji on the one hand, Sogdian, Chorzmian, and Parthian on the other, it is thus in its natural and rightful place in Bactria. The principal religions of the area before Islam were Zoroastrianism and Buddhism. According to Richard Nelson Fry, a leading historian of Iranian and Central Asian history, the Persian migration to Central Asia may be considered the beginning of the modern Tajik nation, and ethnic Persians, along with some elements of East Iranian Bactrians and Sogdians, as the main ancestors of modern Tajiks. The Encyclopedia Britannica states, the Tajiks are the direct descendants of the Iranian peoples whose continuous presence in Central Asia and northern Afghanistan is attested from the middle of the first millennium BC. The ancestors of the Tajiks constituted the core of the ancient population of Khwarezm and Bactria, which formed part of Transoxania They were included in the empires of Persia and Alexander the Great, and they intermingled with such later invaders as the Kushans and Hephthalites in the first 6th centuries ad. Over the course of time, the Eastern Iranian dialect that was used by the ancient Tajiks eventually gave way to Persian, a Western dialect spoken in Iran and Afghanistan. See also Bactria Margiana Archaeological Complex Tilia Tipa Bactrian Camel Balika People Greater Khorasan Dalvez and Tipa Balk Sources Topic Notes Topic External Links Bactrian Coins Bactrian Gold Levius Org Bactria Batrian du Nord About the Terms Region, an archaeological site Art of the Bronze Age, Southeastern Iran, Western Central Asia, and the Indus Valley, an exhibition catalogue from the Metropolitan Museum of Art fully available online as PDF, which contains material on Bactria.